Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. And the topic of this week, we're going to be talking about how the mind and the thoughts will keep you away from experiencing your true self, which is true love. Um, as always, uh, we're going to start with the meditation. Uh, those of you who are for the first time with me, um, keep in mind that we have to uh, mute everybody because uh, individual devices, they make funny noises or there's background in the houses or apartments. So that's going to affect our broadcast. So we're going to put, we're going to mute everyone. After the meditation, I'm going to talk for a while and then you can ask me questions. Um, <clears throat> in the meantime, if you want to uh, write a question to me on the chat box, you're welcome to. If you want to talk to me directly, you can wave at me and I'll unmute you and we talk uh, and we get into um, your question and I try to answer it to the best of my ability. The purpose of the kind of meditation we do, the idea is to help you to go beyond the mind, to go beyond all these busyness and the craziness that is happening in your head. All the noises that you're hearing and it is as if you're in a constant battle and ar argument with an aspect of yourself on daily basis. So if you desire to have some ice cream and, and you keep hearing something inside you speaking about ice cream and then you go eat the ice cream and then 10, 15 minutes after you have a stomach ache, and then the same voice was ta trying to talk you into having an ice cream is going to start blaming you. So then you get into this battle of fighting with yourself and arguing with yourself that why you ate the ice cream. So <clears throat> it appears to be that we're continuously are living with another person in our head. Right? Sometimes maybe there's two other people and these two are in constant conflict with each other. Or there are times that your mind may be your companion and you're talking to yourself that should I be doing this or should I be dyeing my hair blonde or should I go get my nails and then the voice is talking to you is telling you no you shouldn't be doing this you should be doing that. Or should I go buy something that makes me happy and your mind is going to come and tell you, no, you shouldn't be doing that because it's too costly. So this thing is happening all the time. It's a continuous um, debate. And what happens is the thought process of what I call the monkey mind. It, what it does, it, it creates this separation and it cuts you off from the migration from the head to the heart. So instead of living and acting and operating from a place which is very still and quiet within yourself, you end up operating in a world from a place which is chaotic, it's busy and it's, it's constantly in duality. So when you do the work, when you're doing meditation or when you are on the right path, let's put it this way, you are on a path of self-awakening and you are putting the body of work into it. Because again, this part is also not something that just happens overnight. It's something that you have to bring your attention to or 
in other words, it grabs your attention and it brings you into this direction. You're sh there's a shift that happens that the utter world, the world outside of you, it creates guilt, shame, it brings your past in your face and it's telling you you're not worthy, you can't do it, you're not good enough and blah, 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 blah. And it will link you to your childhood and the part of the stuff that has happened in your past, whether you've been abandoned, you've been sexually abused or whatever has happened, it drags you into that area. So it is a constant battle in between the two worlds. You can call it the, the world above and the world below. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this heart meditation. And after the meditation, we're going to be talking about how we can identify this process, this mind process that is continuously keeping you away from the way your natural state of being, because your natural state of being is at peace. The natural, natural state of being of every human being is being silent and being quiet and being here at their hearts. That's our natural state. And that's what happens to you when you're not engaged with your mind, when you're not engaged with the other world. What happens, peace comes and you become calm and quiet. But then when the mind comes and the thought starts, the stream of thoughts starts to travel in your mind, then you get into trouble because you identify with your thoughts. You believe that what you're thinking and what you're thinking, uh, what you're feeling, what you're thinking and what you're feeling is who you are. And you try to control it and you cannot. So what happens is suffering starts to happen because events are out of your hand and you're trying to control things that you can't and things a lot of times don't go your way. And what it does, it creates suffering. And you go through a life, a whole life of suffering because it's up and down and up and down. When things go your way, you're happy. And when things don't go your way, you're miserable. So there has to be a way out. And the conventional belief is that if I go out there and make enough money, if I get the body that I want, if I get the partner that I want, if I have another car, if I have another house, if financially everything is fine for me, I will be happy. But that's impossible because it doesn't happen that way. You finally go get everything you want. You find the partner you wanted. You have enough money. You put everything that you always desired around you. And then all of a sudden something goes wrong. You're diagnosed with a breast cancer. You're diagnosed with a health issue. You lose your son. There's a revolution in your country. There's an earthquake. There's a natural disaster. Something happened and you lose some of the things that you had gained. And then suffering comes back. So the conventional belief system is not going to do you any good because we can see what's going on. You cannot hang on to the things that you acquire, including your body. Everything is going to change. And sometimes the change goes your way and a lot of times it doesn't go your way. So there must be another way to find peace and happiness 
it has to be somewhere else because it's not in acquiring objects. They only bring temporarily happiness when you get them. Yes, it's great. I finally got the car I wanted and I'm happy for a week or two or three or a month and then I'm tired of it. Great, I finally found the partner that I wanted. How long does that last? Maybe, maybe it goes all life. Maybe it happens to be all life, yeah, but the relationship changes. The sex changes. The dynamic changes. The other person's desires changes. So it's temporarily. And we're not interested in, in temporary events. I mean, obviously, you can choose to do that. But we're interested in what is going to keep us happy forever. I want permanent happiness. That's what I want. I want to be at peace with myself all of my life, not conditionally. So what we're going to do today is let's, uh, we're going to do some heart meditation. What I would like you to do is not very, very difficult. I'd like you to shift your attention, and we've talked about this before. When it comes to meditation, you can either put your attention outwards or you can bring your attention inwards. And I like to keep it as simple as possible. So why don't we do this? Let's say if you have your attention on your third eye, it's here. You can even touch, put your hand here, finger here. And what, what, you know, put your finger here and press. Press it to a point that is a little bit uncomfortable. Now, where is your attention? Your attention is on your third eye because that's where the discomfort is. Now, take your finger off of it. Now, bring your attention here. Put your finger here. And press a little bit because, because... I want your attention to go there. Okay? Do you feel it? All right. You can let go. It's okay. The idea was putting your attention on a certain place. So now we bring our attention here. Now, you got your hands, right? Okay, bring your hands close to each other. And imagine right now you have a sponge ball in your hand. You're holding a sponge ball. Okay, I want you to feel. Don't use your mind by thinking. You're holding a sponge ball in your hand. And I want you to gently press against this sponge ball. As you're pressing against it. Do you feel any resistance? And you can expand your hands again and you can press them back in again. And just feel. Don't think. See if you feel pressure when you're pressing this sponge ball. Do you feel any kind of tinglings in your hands? Do you feel like there's a movement happening here. You're pressing against the sponge ball. Anybody raise your hand? Anyone who feels something's happening? You feel a little bit of energy happening between your hands. Great. Fantastic. You can only feel the energy field. Now, expand your hands a little bit. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and press against the sponge ball and see what happens. Does it get more resistant?
Good. You're feeling the energy. Now, what I would like you to do is bring your hands here close to your chest area. Bring the hands close to your chest area and bring them closer to your chest area. And do you feel the same resistance, the same energy here? And as you're bringing your hands, gently put them on your heart. And when you do this, I want you to put your life story away. I don't care what you did, what is going on in, in your life. If you consider yourself a good person or a bad person, in this very moment, I want you to just, without any stories, any judgments, to simply love yourself. and accept yourself. Simply love and accept yourself. Put your story away. Okay? You're here. We're together. You have dedicated this time to be here with, with us. Okay? I want you to disconnect yourself from your past. It doesn't matter. Put the stories you have to do later on away today. But right now, this is the only time you have. You created this time to be here. Means that you care and love yourself. You have your hands here. And I want you to bring your attention to this part of yourself. As you have your hands on your heart, on your chest, I want you to visualize that there is a ball of light. There is light glowing inside you. There is a ball of light and this light is expanding. And you can feel the light in your chest. As you're breathing in and out, the light is expanding. And I want you to tell your, to say to yourself, I love myself. Without any judgments, put your judgments away. I don't care what you've done. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. Just keep your attention on this area. And as we're in this place, we're going to speak a language that we've never spoken. It's called blah, blah, blah. It's time for us to have a good time. And we're just going to play. So allow your mouth to open up and speak a language you've never spoken, okay? It's blah, blah, blah. So we do it together. One, two, three. 
Go ahead and let it out. Oh, what got that? What got your chest? Chest? No, 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 no. Why? No, no, no. What got your chest? 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 Breathe in. As you have your attention on your heart area, see this ball of light which is in your chest area. See if it's growing and its power is increasing. And if you bring your hands closer, you can feel the fire, the light. that is emanating from your heart. Even if you distant your hands from your chest area, you could feel like there is a there is energy. There is an energy field created here. An energy field is getting activated. The next meditation, as you're in silence and you're quiet, I'm going to ask you to stand up and we're going to be shaking. So we're going to be shaking and this is like a release. The idea is to bring you from your head to your heart. So we're going to be shaking and making noises and just be as un inhibited as you would like to be okay so we start <laughs> Take a deep breath. Whew. Relax. Put your hands on your heart area and repeat after me. I love myself. And when you say, I love myself, I would like you to really mean it. Just don't say it like a robot. Just really mean it. In this very moment, really love yourself. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody because I'm love, because I'm light, because I'm God. That's why I love myself and I forgive myself. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 One more time. How are you? Shake it. 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 Shake it.
Take a deep breath. Sink within yourself. Take it, yeah, take a deep hands here close. Center yourself, bring your attention here and center yourself. One more time. I love myself. I love everybody. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. That's why I love myself. Take a deep breath. The next meditation. Yeah, just stay here in the center and feel the heart area. Feel the heart chakra. And the presence, feel the presence, yeah. this ball of light, which is breathing inside you. you. Amir, you can mute everyone. So the next meditation is we're going to raise our hands to the sky and we're going to jump up and down. We start with Yahoo. This starts with Yahoo and moves to Hoo So this is how it's done. Ya Take a deep breath. Drop your hands, put your hands back on your heart, <clears throat> and feel the presence, feel the being. <sighs> and say, repeat after me, I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love myself. I love, I love, myself. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody because I'm love, because I'm light, because I'm God. That's why I love myself and I forgive myself. As you're just standing there and you have your hands on your heart area, you feel the presence, the being. We're going to raise our hands one more time. We're going to do another hoo hoo. Ya hoo
take a deep breath. Sink inside your heart. Feel the presence. Come back to your seat. Come back to your center. Center yourself. And as you're sitting there and you have your eyes closed and your attention comes to center of yourself. And I want you to again, without any judgment, put your judgment away as you have your hands here, as your attention is here. In this very moment, for your courage, for being here, I want you to tell yourself how much you love yourself and you care for yourself. I love myself. And if you want to make it fun, you can do it Mickey Mouse language. Say it in Mickey Mouse language. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. Take a deep breath. You can drop your arms. Your hands if you feel like it. And as you're just sitting there, imagine that this ball of light is growing. Every breath you take, the light is growing and taking over your body. And the light expands and takes all over you. It takes all over your entire being. You're just here, there is no agenda, you're hanging out by yourself, your attention is on ha your heart, you're present, you're here, you're loving yourself, because you're God, and you don't have an agenda. You're simply here right now, just being present. Just be available.
And as you're just sitting here, as you're breathing, with every breath you take, this ball of light, which is coming from your heart, you're the source of it, is growing and growing. And the light is taking over your body and it has come to a point that it has taken all over your body and your entire body has become light. You no longer can tell the boundaries of your body. Everything's light now. Light has taken over. Your mind's quiet. There's no thoughts. And you feel the presence the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, the love of God. God is here. God's taking care of you. You can just let go. You don't have to be in control. You can let God take care of, take over, and carry you, and tend to your needs. You're not in control. And as you are at this place, your heart's open. Light has taken over your body. And this light is expanding beyond the boundaries of your body. And now light has taken over your house. Your entire house, apartment is filled with light filled with love. An incredible presence has taken over. That love heals your body, heals your mind. Let love guide you to light. And remember that love is your true birthright. You come from land of love. You come from land of light. That's where you were before you were born. And is your mission in this life to carry that torch, the torch of light, the torch of love. Remember that God is your pulse. It's because of the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, Supreme Being, in your heart that you're here and you're alive. That presence, that love is responsible for your well-being. It will provide for you.
It will challenge you and it will provide for you. But when you sense the presence of love in your heart, then there is nothing to fear. Fear disappears. Just be open to this love, to the presence. Be open to God, to light. No, because you have this love in your heart that you can touch other people by it. Your kindness, your care, your touch heals other people too. But as you're loving and caring towards other people, your first mission is to be caring and loving to yourself. To be kind to yourself. To take care of yourself and to do things that are good to you. And that starts by putting your judgments about yourself away. Stop judging yourself and beating yourself up. This ball of light, this presence in your heart keeps expanding and takes over the city that you live in. The love that is emanating from your heart has spread to an entire city. and it's transforming your environment. Take a deep breath. Be with yourself in this moment, away from your worries, your responsibilities. Just appreciate yourself, appreciate being here, appreciate everything you have in this moment. Appreciate your friends, family, people who care for you, your animals. Just be in this grateful place, gratefulness, that you're healthy, you're able, you have everything you need in this moment. This moment is the only moment we have. And the truth that you're endowed by power of love. Don't underestimate your power. The power of love. And don't allow fear to overshadow the love that you have in your heart. That this love that you have can transform 
any darkness to light. And no matter how insignificant you may feel that as one person you are, don't forget that the fact that love exists, God exists in your heart, that is the Supreme Being. That's the Supreme Soul. That the power of God and the power of love that's in your heart can overcome any kind of obstacles in life. Keep in mind that God, love, has its mysterious way of when you're in need, always opens up a door for you, always sends you an angel in a very mysterious way, always help comes in a very unexpected way. That's the mystery of life. Stay in this gratitude place, being grateful. Don't give in to your mind that complains all the time. That's the nature of the mind. Stay here in this place. Remember your beauty. You're very beautiful. Don't get fooled by your mind and the thoughts that clutter your judgment. Come back to the heart. Come back to where you love. No matter how many times you've been down You've been abused, you've been beaten up, you've been told you're not good enough, you've been abandoned, you've been abused, pushed around. Doesn't matter. You still love and you still look God. And I love you because I see your beauty. I see how beautiful you are. And I hope you see that inside yourself too. I see your light. And I hope you can see your own light. And your power. Your self-judgment is only a thought. That's all it is. It's a feeling and a thought. Keeping you away from recognizing your true power. Take a deep breath and slowly, slowly re-merge into the body. Come back here.
and you can feel the presence right now you've done some work you can feel that there is an energy something is here right now something has taken over there's a presence and you have become quiet it's a migration from the head to the heart and as you have migrated from the head to the heart you're in a place of the presence You're in a place of the heart, which is calm, quiet, collected. It's not involved with the world's affairs. It's not involved with your thinking mind. And from this place, you're able to observe. You can observe your thoughts. You can observe your feelings. And you can observe your body. From this place, you can observe the world, and as you're observing, you can see that everything is changing, and everything is revolving around you, but you're not it. And now bring your hands together again, as in this place. Hold the sponge ball and press against it. And you see that its sponge ball has become more resistant. As you're trying to press against it, there's resistance. Feel it, but don't think about it just gently press your fingers make me tingling you're getting hot cold the presence has become more powerful more clear This is the energy field. This is the presence of the being which is in you and within you. When you begin to do the work and you begin to notice the power of the heart, you begin to become aware of the presence. This is the presence of God, which is inside you, and it's surrounding you and everybody else. It's the being. When you connect with your own being at this place, then what happens with the right guidance, you can observe your mind. You can see that there is a stream of thoughts passing through your mind. Your mind is always having thoughts passing through it. Now, I'm going to use a metaphor to help you make this very simple to understand. You are the observer. You're the watcher. You're the one who is aware. A human being their job is to be aware 
you can never not be aware. You're aware of the sounds outside, you're aware of your computer, you're aware of your phone, you're aware of the sirens of the um, police cars or ambulances or whatever on the street. You're aware of everything. So your awareness. You're also simultaneously aware of your thoughts, that you got all these thoughts going through your mind. But you're not always thinking. There's not always thoughts passing through your mind. If you were your thinking mind, then you could never be able to come and tell me that Zarathustra, my mind is driving me crazy. I have so much thoughts. Because if you were your thoughts, you wouldn't be able to, to know. You wouldn't be able to distinguish because that's who you are. The fact that you can observe your thoughts and you can make a report that my mind is very busy, it's driving me crazy, is because you're not your mind. You're separated from your mind. You're somewhere else. So here's the mind running, and here you are. So you may say, okay, Zarathustra, what do I do now? How do I free myself from this busy mind? Actually, with the right training, it's not really that difficult to separate yourself from your mind and not to be the victim of your thoughts anymore. Because your thoughts can take you to some really dark places and it can create a lot of suffering for you. So, imagine of the blue sky. The blue sky is always blue. The only reason the sky is not blue is because of the clouds that are passing through it. But let's say you have like three months of gray weather. It's cloudy every day. There's all kinds of storms passing through. There's hail, there's snow, there's thunder. But after three months of really bad weather, what happens? The clouds go away, and when you look into the sky, you see the sky is still blue. The sky never come and tell you that I'm not going to be blue anymore. I'll be light blue, or I'm going to have some scratches on me, and I'll have some pink in me. The sky always remains blue no matter what happens, no matter how many storms go through it. The storms and the clouds can never touch the sky. But they can clutter it and you don't see the blue sky. Similarly, the same thing. You are the awareness. You're the watcher. You're the witness. You are witnessing your thoughts. The thoughts are passing in front of you, but you're not your thoughts. You're the one who's observing them. You're the one who's aware of them. You're the one who's witnessing them. But you are not the thoughts. So, if you try any kind of system, any sort of training to stop your mind, then you're going to fail because you're using the mind to stop the mind. You may come say to me, Zarathustra, I'm really suffering from a very busy mind. My mind is driving me crazy. I have all this fear, all this anxiety, all these suicidal thoughts. I hate myself. I don't love myself. I'm afraid of a lot of things. So then I would say, why don't we step back and bring you into the heart 
bring you to where you're connected to the divine self, yourself. And from this place, you can observe the thoughts. So what happens is we shift your attention. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring your attention inwards to the source of the thoughts. Where do the thoughts come from? So we're going to follow your thoughts back all the way to the source. And when you come to the source, or let's say from the mind to the heart, and you come back to this place, and as you follow the thoughts back, and let's say you come to, like there's a lake, there's a pond, there's a clear lake, and the thoughts come out of it, and you're following the thoughts back, and all of a sudden you come to the lake, and you jump in the lake, and you realize there's no thoughts. And we can do it right now. You bring your attention inward, and you take the attention to the observer, the one who is observing, not what she or he observing. We're not trying to stop the thoughts. We're not trying to do positive thinking or positive visualization. We're simply observing, we're simply bringing our attention to the observer. You bring your attention to the one who is observing, but not what is being observed. And if you pay attention, you realize your mind becomes absolutely quiet. All of a sudden, there are no thoughts. Then a thought comes, says, oh, I'm bored. Or a thought comes to your mind, says, oh, I need to to pay my bill. I have to send an email. I need to go and exercise. I need to feed my dog. I need to go pick up my kids from school. So the thoughts will come. So that's a thought. What you do is you simply are observing the thought. And you don't get involved with it. And the thought may be a great thought. It may be a wonderful, holy thought. Or a constructive thought. But it still doesn't matter. It's a thought. Thoughts are weightless. They don't have any weight. So... You're going to get a thought goes through your mind that, hey, you're not pretty enough. You're, you're unattractive. And what happens is you pick up the thought, and then the thought drags you down. Because it was only a thought traveling to your mind. And a thought, when you pick it up, becomes like a thief. Like there's a thief in your home. It's simply a thought. Now what's the difference between a thought that a thought goes to your mind that I am ugly or I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy to find my, my partner in life. I'm not worthy to be loved. It's a thought, right? What's the difference between that thought and a thought that I want to go across the street and get myself a cup of coffee? Okay, you're at your home, you're relaxed, or you're doing something, you're behind your computer, and 
you know, you go on a page, all of a sudden you see a photo of someone very good looking on Instagram or Facebook and a thought comes to your mind that, oh my God, they're so good looking and I'm not good looking. Oh, they seem like so happy. That's a very happy couple and I'm unhappy. So a thought comes for you. Okay? Now, when that thought comes, oh, that couple look very happy and I'm not happy. And then the feeling comes. Now you're feeling inadequate. You feel like there is something wrong in your life. You feel like you have to have more. So you picked up the thought. And that thought is going to lead you to another thought. Okay, I don't have enough money. I don't have the right body. I don't have the right place. I'm not in the right house. I need to have more. Because now you're thinking you have to get things acquiring things to make you happy. In this work, I'm trying to show to you that you really don't need to get anything in this life to be happy because your happiness is not into getting more things, adding more things. Your happiness is to migrate from the world of thoughts to come here to recognize the presence because when you're not thinking and you move from thinking into the to the being you migrate here every time you switch you you may want to call it meditation but whatever it is every time you switch from the thoughts and you come here Every single time, anywhere you are in the world, in any position, you can try it on your own. All of a sudden, you feel the presence. When you switch from the mind and you come here, all of a sudden, everything's calm, everything's quiet, it's warm and fuzzy, and you feel the presence of the being. You start to feel the love which is here. Because you're not thinking. You're not in your mind. And in that, all of a sudden, you begin to feel you're whole. You're complete. So then you move on with your day. Then there's another thought comes. Oh, I'm, I'm such a slacker. I'm not going to the gym three times a week. I'm not da 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 da. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. All of my friends around my age, by now, they're married. They're happy. They own a home. So another series of thoughts come to your mind comparing you to something else. So you're buying the thoughts, and what does it do? It creates suffering. You're suffering. So again, you come back, you get into a training, a systematic training of shifting from all these thoughts to coming back to the center. You come back to your center again. And then all of a sudden, everything becomes calm and quiet. Because when you come back to your center, here, right now, there is no story. Your life story is not here. Here it becomes calm, quiet, it's centered. You feel the presence and you feel the being. You feel God. The truth of the matter is that there's only one being, one God, one presence, one spirit. 
And that one spirit runs through every human being, everything in the universe. That's one spirit. And that one spirit, one God, one love, is responsible for feeding each and every one of us. Because we have this thinking mind, we keep thinking that I am responsible for feeding myself. I am responsible to go out there and make money. I am responsible for accomplishments. And then when I don't accomplish and I lose, I fail, I beat myself up because I'm having this false identity that I'm the one who does it. But in reality, there's nothing you do. You're not the one who's doing it. It's the presence doing it through you. Whether your actions are good or your actions are bad, it doesn't matter. It's the presence who is doing things through you. So when you get invited and you come on this path of spiritual world and you're coming back home, as this is what's happening right now, we're coming more, we're diverted towards God, we're coming home to the heart, to the love, we begin to feel the presence, we start to notice that there's an order in this life. There is a magic that this magic put things together. There is a power that this power lines things up in a magical way. In the most unexpected way, all of a sudden your needs get met. And as you notice this transaction, the more you pay attention, the more you let go of this imaginary will that you're hands on, the more you let it go, the more you sink in here, and the more you see how things come together magically. And slowly, slowly, you're migrating because you're becoming more the observer of the mind rather than being the mind and in that expansion starts to happen because you're kicking back you're relaxing in trusting life in accepting life that you're taken care of the more you trust it the more you let go the more it gets expanded an expansion happens. So in expansion, everything becomes possible. When you contract it and you're like, this has to happen, this has to happen, I have to find a partner, I have to find love in my life, I have to get rich, I have to do that, it's contraction. Things, there is no room for things to happen. But when you let go, and you're like, oh, okay, I surrender, then da, 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 things fall into places for you. Things come because you're letting it, you're expanding. And life brings you things. You need help, it will come. You need guidance, you will come. You need teacher it will come you need money it will come everything will just fall into places because because you're feeling the presence you're feeling God in your heart and you're trusting it and you're operating from this place of intuitive knowing rather than your mind and now you can observe your mind you can see that you are not this thing this thing is just going like crazy. You're not trying to fight it. You're only watching it. You watch your mind. Same thing, you're watching your emotions. They come and they go. 
How many times a day do you change your emotions? You get up in the morning and you may be happy. Then an hour after you get an email or a text message and now you're depressed. Then you turn on the news, then you're in fear because the job of the news is to create fear, to put fear in your heart. Then by afternoon somebody calls you and tells you this is going to happen, that's going to happen. Now you're in just panic. Your emotions come and go all the time. Like your thoughts, they're passing through you all the time. But who remains here? Who is it that's observing all these thoughts coming and going? And who is here that is observing the emotions come and go? To whom do they come and go? Somebody here must be at all time still. Someone's still, stationary, and things passing in front of that person. Because if you don't, if you're not still and you're not stationary, then how can you detect movements? How can you see things come and go? If you're in a car driving and you're going parallel to a train, a train is going and you're driving parallel to the train and you're going in the same speed, you can never tell the train is moving because you're both going in the same speed, parallel to each other. But if you're standing up and a train is passing by, then you know movement. Something's moving because you're observing movement. Why are you observing movement? Because you're not moving. You're still. So what I'm telling you is you are never moving. You are still. You're being the presence the observer, the watcher, the one who has watched all of your life. All of your life has passed in front of you. Because you never move. You're always stationary. And the reason that you can watch your mind and you can see thoughts passing by is because you are not, at one, you're not affected. Two is you're not moving. You're always still in one place observing. You've been doing it all of your life. From the time you were born, you've been doing it till now. Nobody told you about it. No one has ever trained you or have told you that you are not your passing thoughts. All of your education, all of your life, your schooling, your parents, your teacher, the priest, church, education, media, everybody is telling you you are what you're thinking. Everybody's telling you whatever you're feeling is who you are. So what are you trying to do? You're trying to fix your thoughts and you're trying to fix your emotions. But you're neither your thoughts nor your emotions. That's why you can't fix them. You're the observer of your thoughts and your emotions. You're the one who's aware of them, but you're not them. And since you're not your thoughts and you're not your emotions, a lot of your emotions are not yours. Like if you live in a big city like I live in Los Angeles, there's a lot of anxiety in this city. There's a lot of fear. But when I drive and go in a desert, I go to Joshua Tree, I go to Sedona, I get away from busyness, or two weeks ago I went to Yosemite. There was no, I didn't feel any emotions I was there. 
I was just very calm, quiet. My mind was not busy. There was very little thoughts in my mind. And then I come back to, to Los Angeles. I can feel people's emotions all the time. And I live in Venice Beach, but if I go to Hollywood, it gets worse. I can experience anxiety there. And then when I go towards the nature and I love to go hiking, I love to spend time in the nature, everything becomes super quiet. Because my receptives are not picking up fear, worry, anxiety of other people. And I'm not picking up the desires of other people. Unless you learn and you go into the right training. I'm not talking about pseudo-spirituality. I'm not talking about today's spirituality which throws you off. It puts you in the wrong path because it's teaching you that you have the power of getting anything you want and it's teaching you that you can manifest anything you, you want. That is the opposite of what I teach because that activates your mind and your emotions. That makes things worse. This teaching is about separating yourself from your thoughts, separating yourself from your emotions, and separating yourself from the body, even your body. Finding your true place. What is your true place? Your true place is the heart, the state of being, calmness, quiet, balance, equilibrium, where it's peaceful, always. Not peace come and go, peace all the time. And that is when you learn to switch your attention from the objects and you bring your attention inwards. And then everything in your life calms down and becomes quiet because you become quiet. And as you become more quiet and centered, means you have discovered the love, you're realizing that God, not in a religious way when I say God, I'm not talking about this guy up there who's got white hair, white beard, and he's got a stick in his hand that every time you think about sex, he wants to beat you up because it's attaching sex to shame and guilt. I'm not talking about that God. That's something created. I'm talking about through God. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about how beautiful you are, where you're here in your heart you're so beautiful, my God. When we sit together and we're doing the work and you guys come to your divine place, I can't tell you how beautiful it is. I can't tell you how much love I feel from you because I see your true beauty and you're not involved in your head. And it makes me want to do whatever I can for you. It makes me want to help and be available for you. It makes me want to give you everything I've got. Because I see, I see the real you. Your guards are away. You're not in your head. And the love, the power you have, that love is shining so brightly. And I want you to see this yourself. I want you to realize who you are, how beautiful you are, how much love is in your power. This love you have heals things. But we have been brainwashed and trained and also throughout our childhood we've been damaged with all these damages that we have received and we forget who we are. We have forgotten who we are. 
We have become something we're not. We have forgotten the way of the heart because our mind's driving us crazy. So we got to go back. We got to migrate back to the heart. And in this life, we want to come to true happiness, true love, of loving ourselves, accepting ourselves for who we are and what we are. We want, and we want to become and reach our fullest potential. That's the presence. That's the recognition. The recognition of the Divine Self. The recognition of God. here. It's here all the time. All the time, 24-7, every day of your life, you have the kahuna, Her Majesty, hugging you, holding you, carrying you, loving you, every moment. It's your natural birthright. It's your birthright. You were born with it. You have God inside you, surrounding you, all over you, continuously showering you. Yet, the mind and the conditioning of the mind and all these thoughts are cluttering the truth of who you are. So it's not that I have to help you find God because it's already here. It's for me to remove these obstacles and these clouds, so you recognize who you are. So, we're getting close to the end of our academy. Uh, we'll have uh, next Academy is going to be next Wednesday. I'm sorry, <laughs> I talked a lot and I didn't get into the uh, part of uh, <laughs> opening space for us to be talking. So I apologize for that, but we're running out of time. So we'll do it next week. Uh, a couple quick announcements. Uh, we're having a shamanic, uh, shamanic healing event next Thursday and uh, so you can go over my website and you can register at zaratustra.tv which is my website and then uh, the following followed by that on the weekend I'm going to have a two-day workshop the workshop starts from 9 to 1 every day Saturday and Sunday and the workshop is about 5D quantum awareness, the direct experience. So 
The workshop is going to be about how we can operate and reach fifth dimensional quantum awareness and have a direct experience of the self. In addition to that, that I have created a one-on-one -on -one VIP tailor-made program, which is called Life Training Program. And I do have space for two students uh, to um, enroll. And this is a three-month program. It's tailor-made for your needs, which we meet, and then I will design it for you. And uh, we start working on that. So if you're interested, you can email me and we'll set up a consultation uh, appointment and I'll give you more details about uh, this program and then we'll uh, identify to see if this is for you or not, if it's going to benefit you or not. Feel free to contact me. My information is info at zaratustra.tv info at zaratustra.tv and my website is zaratustra.tv well thank you for joining me sending you my love and light love you very much namaste